Hello everybody, my name is Santiago Iregui. I am a PhD candidate from the University of Leuven in Belgium. And today I'm here to talk to you about our work on generating reactive virtual kind of fixtures for assisted tele manipulation tasks. This work was performed with the motivation of assisting with spinal cord injured patients with different levels of mobility during daily tasks and help them to improve their quality of lives. The assistive strategy that we are going to present was developed within the constraint based task specification and control framework ETASEL whose reference you will find at the end of this talk. In order to understand the properties of the reactive virtual guidance fixture, let's first start by observing its behavior in a human in the loop simulation. The green sphere, which is controlled by the human operator through a 3D connection space mouse, represents the position of the end effector of a robot. You can observe that the human can drive the end effector freely inside the volume of a yellow tube-shaped virtual fixture. Outside this volume, an impedance attracts the end effector of the robot towards its interior, resulting in effective guidance of the operator towards the goal. The proposed virtual fixture reacts by adapting its shape for two different purposes, to comply to changing goals while snapping to intent deferred targets, and also to guide the operator through a collision-free volume by avoiding dynamic obstacles. In this work, for demonstration purposes, the operator controls the target position with a joystick. The shape of the tube adapts to follow the changing target while preserving the geometric shape learned from a set of demonstrations, which are performed by kinesthetic teaching. The learning algorithm is based on a probabilistic principal component analysis, and it is described in the reference below. In this example, we have three objects, which are detected by a commercial vision system when using it in a physical setup. Our assistive strategy infers the intention of the operator and attracts the endpoint of the tube towards the inferred target object. This attractive behavior is achieved by setting two conflicting self-constraints. The first constrains the endpoint of the tube to go towards the operator's target position, specified in this case with the joystick. The second constrains the same endpoint to go towards the position of the inferred object. The weights of both conflicting constraints are modulated according to the posterior probability of wanting to grasp the predicted object given the operator's target position. This results in a shared control between the operator and the computer. The Mahalanovis coordinates are just normalized position coordinates in the plane where the objects are located. You can observe how the control regions look like as a consequence of the Bayesian intent estimation algorithm and the aforementioned modulation of the weights. The second reactive behavior has the purpose of guiding the operator through a collision-free volume. Here you can see how the shape of the tube adapts when a dynamic obstacle moves towards it. Protective spheres are placed along the tube for setting the collision avoidance constraints. The left and the right simulations are practically the same, with the difference that in the right the protective spheres are shown. The spring-like behavior obtained is similar to the one described in the elastic strips framework, which is referenced below. Here you can see how a human operator controls a 7 degree of freedom robot arm with assistance of the reactive virtual guidance fixture. The orientation of the end effector is autonomously shifted from an initial to a final orientation. This is achieved by setting the orientation as a function of a normalized path variable S, which indicates the progress of the end effector along the tube. Now, imagine that a thirsty operator wants to grab a drink from the fridge. The commercial vision system detects a beer, a juice, and a milk, and provides a picking post for each. Obviously, the operator decides to go for the delicious beer and indicates it by means of the human machine interface, in this case for demonstration purposes, the joystick. Afterwards, the operator decides to grab also a granadilla, a delicious fruit found in Colombia. The vision system was not able to detect it, so the tube is not able to snap to it, but still he would be able to get it with a little more effort. Here you can see how the operator is guided to the target in the presence of a dynamic obstacle. Protective spheres are also placed in the tool so that the operator is not able to move the robot out of the tube in the direction of the obstacle. In a later phase of the project, we plan to perform clinical trials in a physical setup for validation. We expect that operators with different levels of mobility are able to control the robot with a significant reduction of effort and previous training. In addition, different human-machine interfaces are being explored to be used in combination with our framework. For example, a novel visual motor brain-machine interface that is being developed by our project partners. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for listening and wish you a very nice day.